In this video, I will be covering how I installed my siren on my Skywalker. For the FPV enthusiast who has everything, I bet you don't have one of these. Now my idea for the siren is mostly to be able to interact with people on the ground for safety and for fun. There have been many times I've been flying and I wanted people on the ground to be aware of my presence. For example, it's fun to drop parachutes and nerf footballs near people. They enjoy it too from my experience. Kids especially love to see paratroopers skydiving from this tiny miniature airplane. They're fascinated by it. However, my Skywalker is very quiet in the air, so the vast majority of the time my parachute drops go unnoticed. What if I installed a loud siren in my plane to get their attention? Another reason is for safety, like low flying near people. There is nothing worse than wanting to land and having a stray person or two near your runway when you are lining up for final. It would be neat to turn the siren on for a few seconds during approach to alert people to turn around and look to see that I am landing. Another reason would be search and rescue operations. A stranded hiker would never hear my skywalker overhead, but they would hear a siren and perhaps come out of their shelter to let me get a visual on them. Okay, let me show you how easy this is to install. Let's do this. In one of my last videos, I showed you how to make a siren from a 12 volt energizer panic alarm. Well, that experiment ended in failure because I am a crappy solderer, apparently. When one of the weak leads broke loose, I tried to solder it back multiple times and failed. So I pretty much destroyed this first one. So, back to eBay in search of another siren. I found this one for about $12, which looked kind of big, but promising. I will put a link to this item down in the description box below. When it arrived, I took it apart, then I used a Dremel tool to chop away the extra weight. Stock, it weighs 1.1 ounces, and now after the Dremel diet, it's down to 0.6 ounces. So I cut the weight almost in half with the Dremel cutting wheel and grinder. Next, I checked the current draw to make sure it was well within the limits of my onboard multi-switch. Then I used an X-Acto knife to literally hack a hole in the nose of my Skywalker. I wasn't worried about weakening it because the siren body itself is at least as strong as the EPO foam. So when it's all glued in tight, it will be stronger if anything. Now I grabbed a JST plug from my stash and soldered it on the bare siren leads. Next I plugged in one of the twisted power leads which came with my multi-switch. It is plenty long enough to reach all the way from my switch to the siren itself. Now our siren is all ready to install. Just get the hot glue gun ready and glue it in. Here I glued it in in the nose. I pushed it in from the inside and now I'm just wiping off the excess to make sure all the gaps are completely filled for strength. All right, there's the speaker fully installed in the nose and the electronics are right inside there. I just hot glued it. You can see the speaker down there and then the wires running to the circuit board and then the other wires running to 12 volt powers coming out this way. Now I also have a, the LED light in front is one of those wires and then the other set of wires is for the speaker. So I got two sets of wires for two separate spots on my multi-switch. They're going to be plugged in. One's already plugged in. The other one I'm going to plug in in a second. Now if the part about the multi-switch has left you baffled that's because you probably didn't watch my video. Um, click the video down in the link below in the description box for my multi-switch demo and installation. And that's it. Have fun, fly safe, and please do not annoy your neighbors with this little upgrade. It's fun, but be responsible.